It's the opening weekend in the National Football League as the Jacksonville Jaguars take on the Indianapolis Colts. Our broadcast today is brought to you in Sony High Definition. And our kickoff is next. The Jags and the Colts on CBS. CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Hard to believe, but Jack Del Rio is in his seventh season as the Jacksonville head coach. Four games over 500, but four and eight against this Indianapolis team. And a longtime Dungey assistant, Jim Caldwell, is now the head man. They say, Solomon, there has not been a speed bump at all with this guy. Business as usual. Yeah, he, he, he shares a lot of similarities with Tony Dungy, but the difference is, is that he's more vocal, and the players welcome it. Josh Scobie with the pretty good leg will be kicking off and there you see the second year player Chad Simpson. We're indoors basically although the roof is open very little wind to deal with and here we go the season is underway. He'll leave it in the end zone. Chad Simpson to the 20 yard line and first and 10 for the Indy offense led by quarterback Peyton Manning and a year ago uh, Solomon he was coming off knee surgery with no training camp. He just went on to win his third NFL MVP award. Not bad. It made it look easy <laughs> after missing all of training camp and the preseason. 20-yard line, first and 10. There'll be two tight ends with Clark along with Robinson. And a 43, make it a 34 look to begin for this normal 43 defense. First and 10. And a die, getting a block from Robinson. He's out to about the 24. And he gains four on the play. The left tackle is Charlie Johnson. He starts as the Colts continue to search for an answer, protecting Manning's blind side. And running back Joseph Adai and the play action game key for this offense. The Colts were 31st in rushing a season ago. Absolutely. They have to be able to improve their ability to run the football, especially against this Jaguar defense. It is second down and six. Pollock with a good block at the guard. It was off of the hands and picked up by Reggie Wayne. Tackled by Clint Ingram. It was off Dallas Clark's hands. Ricocheting in for a 15-yard gain to the 39. Initially, good pressure by Harvey coming off the right corner. And then good coverage also. You could see right off the hands of Dallas Clark. Reggie Wayne, he told you he would have some big numbers in 2009. A little lucky right there for the Indianapolis Colts because tips and overthrows are usually intercepted. 34 defense, four in the secondary, first and 10, game opening drive. Fake to a dive. Good block by Dean to the sideline for Wayne. Did he keep his feet in? He was working on the rookie Cox in another great reception. That good for 16 yards on the heels of a 15 yard gain moments ago. Very difficult throw for Peyton Manning. I thought the 51 linebacker Clint Ingram gets an excellent drop forcing the high arcing pass to the sideline. See that's a small window to fit that ball in. Ingram had a perfect drop but a better throw by Manning. This is a die on first and 10. You saw Henderson have a hand on him right there and there's no gain on first and 10. He's to the 45. Terrence Knighton is a rookie. He makes that 34 defense a part of the regular 43 look. Jaguars will be given defenses multiple looks. And Justin Durant now moves to the middle in that linebacking core. And Cox, the rookie, just beaten. He replaces the released veteran Brian Williams. Second down and 10. 3 4 look right now by Jaguars on defense. And he goes through a great cadence every time he is waiting for the snap from all pro Jeff Saturday that is caught Robinson picks it up it is a gain of four big hit there by Considine a late hit after the tackle was made by Smith Considine the ex eagle will pick up the foul so much emotion yes in that first game everyone's come out and playing hard but that time Daryl Smith went just a little bit too far at the conclusion of the play personal foul unnecessary roughness defense number 37 15 yard penalty automatic first down we'll watch it again actually number 37 Sean Considine it was that hit Smith 
had pulled him to the ground, but 37 Considine came in and delivered the blow to the head. One of those rules of emphasis that the officials are looking for. Jacob Tanney has now come in on the near side slot. Team opening drive, couple nice long receptions by Wayne. It began back at the 20. First and 10. Die is at the side of Manning. His reads, of course, cause him to make these changes. Outside to Tanning. He's looking for a block. And the tackle, as you see, made by Cox along with Nelson. It is a gain of six, and there was a blocker out there. The left tackle, Charlie Johnson, who is starting out there in place of Hugo, who was the starter, I guess the guy that wanted to be there a couple years ago. Absolutely. Charlie Johnson now starting at that position. And you mentioned Terrence Knighton, the defensive tackle uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He moves down to that zero technique, playing the nose guard when they go to that 3-4 scheme, which is what you see right here. Second down and four, still four in the secondary. Tammy is still in there as the slot receiver atop your screen. And Dallas Green has come in. So now they got linebackers covering those two tight ends who are split. This is a die. Dean with the block. And again, the pile ensuing. You see Knighton, the rookie out of Temple, making the stop. It is a gain of three, and we'll put him, Solomon, at the 16. Well, the reason why they can transform or morph from a 4-3 to a 3-4 scheme with the same personnel as Derek Harvey, the second-year defensive end slash linebacker from Florida. He has the ability to stand up and play an outside linebacker position, number 91. Keep an eye on him. But their ability to go from a 3-4 to a 4-3, I think it forces Peyton Manning to do a little bit more studying at the line of scrimmage. Can't lock in on his intended play or receiver. Another defensive lineman is in. They've only got three in the secondary. It's third and one, the eighth play of this drive. And the handoff and a guy with a big hole and inside the five. There was a lead block put in there by Eric Foster, who is playing the fullback. He is a normal defensive lineman, number 68, leading the way in a gain of 12. Watch it go on the left side. Charlie Johnson seals the edge, and Joseph Adai is able to get to the second level of the defense. The Colts told us when we spoke with them on Friday, our ability to run the football is going to be imperative. And I remember Reggie Wayne said, if we can't block them, we can't beat them. Two tight ends. Gian is uh, Robinson is in tight. It is first and goal at the four. Good looking opening game drive orchestrated by Manning. The fake to a die and Green make it to Clark. Looked like he got tangled up in the end zone. I think the linebacker was back there. Justin Durant with I, him. I could tell you the Jacksonville Jaguars. They played the Colts so many times. They understood that once you get into this position of the field inside the red zone, it's always a play action fake to Dallas Clark trying to suck up the linebackers to slip the tight end behind you. They were really dialed in on that play. Four defensive backs second down and goal at the four. They began at the 20 couple long receptions by Reggie Wayne of 16 and 15 and then the guy had a 16 yard run. Collie is in as the slot receiver the rookie the fade route intercepted in the end zone and picked off by the rookie Derek Cox a third round pick out of William and Mary he has just intercepted Pete Manning in the end zone he was watching our film works he <laughs> knew the fade route was coming and boy was he ready to make a play what a huge play on the game opening drive A red zone interception by Peyton Manning. And you can see they're shading Peyton over on that side of the field. Had some concerns about it. First and ten, it goes outside to Maurice Jones. Drew, the tackle was made out there by Brackett. It is a gain of one. He's to the 21-yard line. And the quarterback for this Jacksonville team is David Garrard. He's 20 pounds lighter and coming off a career high in passing yards a year ago. And he's a guy that has to step up in the leadership department. 22 new players on the 53-man roster. A lot of young players looking for some leadership from David Garrard. Greg Jones is the fullback. It is second down and nine. 43 defense by the Colts. Jones drew a block from the fullback Jones. And then he is out for a gain of about four. Submarining there, Bethay. They get a gain of five to the 26-yard line. Two rookie tackles starting this season opener. The first round pick is Eugene Monroe. He'll face Freeney, among others, at that left side. And Maurice Jones Drew is the full-time starter for the first time in his career. They released Fred Taylor in the offseason. Third and a short four. 
Extra receiver is Hughes. Four in the secondary for the Colts. Maurice Jones drew a block from Williamson. A first down run, a catch and run, and he's out to the 41 yard line. And Kelvin Hayden out there along with Bethay, 14 yard catch and run, a first down for Jacksonville. They blitz, and you could see him coming off the corner, and as you Catch them blitz and they go with the little play where they just flip it over to Maurice Jones Drew. They're able to get around the defensive end, Robert Mathis. Anytime you get him in space, he's capable of making big plays. Now a new running back is in that is Montel Owens. They're going to give MJD a breather across the way with two tight ends. First and ten and play action by Gerard. Mercedes Lewis, the Mackey Award winner a couple years ago out of UCLA, brought down by Taiwan Hagler. It is a gain of two and put him at the 41. The Colts defense, Dwight Freeney, is the signature defensive player for the Colts. Multiple Pro Bowls and zeroing in on those rookie tackles today. Gary Brackett has already made a tackle today. He's the man in the middle. And a rookie starts at one of the corners, Gerard Powers. Marlon Jackson will play the nickel. He is still not 100% from the injury from a season ago. You see the three wideouts. Five in the secondary. Jackson is in as the nickel on second down and nine. Maurice Jones Drew is back in as well. Bethea brings him down at midfield after a burst of eight yards. They can run. Jacksonville has proven they can run against the Colts. And anytime you see five defensive backs on the field, then that's when you want to run it because you have one less linebacker on the field. That's why you have this gaping hole in the Indianapolis Colts defense. That time Marlon Jackson came in as the fifth defender at that slot cornerback. He's got to work more as a linebacker and be prepared to stop the run. Dean Brock is coming on the defensive line. They're back to four in the secondary. It is third down and one. And Garrard, not with the bulk of a season ago, but certainly the power. He's inside the 49. He has the first down. The middle of that line brings him down. Meester leading the way. Absolutely. For any quarterback, the power starts with the legs, and he still has a strong lower body to push that offensive line forward in order to move the chain. Solomon, he was the number one rushing quarterback in the league a season ago. Well, that's where I think he has the ability to break down your defense. Obviously, an excellent thrower of the football, makes really good decisions, doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, but when the coverage is there, he can break down your defense by running it. Mathis and Freeney are the ends. It is first and ten from the 48. First possession for Jacksonville. They get by Eugene Monroe, and here comes Freeney! And a fumble on the play, and the Colts, they're going to mark him down. It is still Jacksonville's ball. Freeney coming through and working on the rookie left tackle, and a loss on the play of eight. Excellent up and under move by Dwight Freeney. This has to be a huge concern if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars. Watch him up top. He's going up, and then the spin move coming underneath. Walks right into the backfield. David Garrard didn't have a chance. At some point, they're going to have to give the rookie some help because you can't have this all day. You're on a fast track here on turf, playing at home, and now look at Dwight Freeney saying, we can make the Pro Bowl in week one. He's done it four times. He had 10 sacks last year, second down and 17, then either 38. That's caught by Williamson, the ex-first round pick by Minnesota, brought down by Bethay, also hidden there by Taiwan Hagler, and Solomon, it's a gain of 10 down to the 46. I think if you're the Indianapolis Colts first, you've got to be able to stop the run. I know you hear that a lot, and it is a cliche, but the reason why is because you've got to put David Garrard and this Jaguars offense in third and long, now facing the third and seven. Let's see if the Indianapolis Colts will decide to blitz. They're going to do more of this in 2009 with their new defensive coordinator, Larry Coyle. Marlon Jackson is the nickel. You see the assortment of receivers, third down and seven. They need the 38. Britton with the block at the right tackle. Mercedes Lewis with the catch, but shy of the first down. They got him on the side. Nice grab right there by Clint Session, who is the linebacker. It's a gain of four. It's fourth down, and Garrard can't do anything with it after beginning at his 20, getting a nice play by Maurice Jones. Drew on a catch on that drive of 14 yards. And you ask, why did he throw the ball so short of the first down marker? They only rushed four in the pass rush pattern, dropping seven in coverage. And I think Garrard did a right thing there. You try to force that ball down the field, and you can throw a turnover or an interception. Did the right thing by checking it down. Adam Podlish will be punting. Rushing his deep back. He wants to knuckleball this. Great hang time. Fair catch signal for it. Allotted at the 16-yard line with a hang time of 4.5. 32-yard punt. Manning just threw a red zone interception. How does he respond? We'll find out in 421 here in the first from Indy. 
Colts, second possession, 12-yard line, first and 10. 34 defense by Jacksonville. Couple tight ends. Joseph Fada blocked by Robinson. Swarming defense. Tackle made by Smith and a gain of a yard. We have some new technology for you. It's called our eye control. Watch the play here on the fade route. Remember, it's a race to the back pylon, not the front one. And you can see this one is underthrown. He doesn't get to the mark. That's why that ball is intercepted by the rookie, Derek Cox, smartly staying inbounds. Four defensive backs, second down nine. November is when he last threw that interception last season. Tammy is out there as an extra receiver. Good block by Saturday. That's caught by Adai. Hit by the linebacker Smith. He's out to the 20 and Solomon. He picks up seven. And this is where Joseph Adai, remember he first came into the league. His ability not only to run it, pass, protect, but catching the ball out of the backfield served as another weapon for Peyton Manning. We talk so much about the absence of Marvin Harrison. We know that Reggie Wayne can put up numbers. So can Dallas Clark. But I think Joseph Adai has to rejoin the party after missing several games last year. Few days. Scott Starks comes in as an extra defensive back. They got five back there for Jacksonville. Third down and two. Donald Brown, the first round pick out of UConn, is back there with Manning. Third and one. Brown is the outlet. He gets by Rasheed Mathis. He bumped into his own blocker, and then he's brought down, but he's got the first down. He picks up six on third and a couple, and they move the chains, keeping it alive. He led the nation in rushing with over 2,000 yards last year coming out of UConn, but he can catch the ball out of the backfield. They drop seven in coverage. All you got to do if you're Jacksonville, make the tackle. But the ability of Donald Brown to make the first defender miss tells you he has the chance to be an elite running back. Gonzalez had a nice block. Considine made the tackle. First and ten. Second possession for Indianapolis at the 26. Brown remains in the backfield. And the former Big East player of the year tripped up. Nice play. Flying in. Tyron Brackenridge, the ex-chief. Gain of the yard. Player is down across the way. And that is Gonzalez, and he's holding on to his right knee. Never a good sign mm -mm. for any play. Gonzalez, of course, with Marvin Harrison gone, you talked about it beforehand. He's a guy that's got to fill that void. Absolutely. Third-year player out of Ohio State has to step up and make plays. Injury timeout in 206 in the first. We're just talking about Anthony Gonzalez. He's down right now and taken over to the sideline. And as he was coming over to the sideline, he couldn't put any weight on that knee. I think he was holding his right knee. You can see him right at the top of the screen. And he's just going to go down in, in a heap. Look, with no contact, just goes down. Holding the right leg. Garcon will take his place, number 85, two years out of Division Three Mount Union, second down and nine. There's a nickel secondary. The nickel back is Brackenridge. Brown is in the backfield with Manning. And Colley is out there, too, as a wide receiver. So they've got four, five, as you said, for Jacksonville's defense. Deep back. Dean with the block. Ellison was coming through. The linebacker, Smith, reads it. Clark is the guy to catch it. It is a gain of four on the play. Dallas Clark is much like a wide receiver himself. Very seldom will you see him attached to the line of scrimmage with his hand on the ground. Always operating in space where he can win the matchup advantage. No huddle. Nickel secondary. Collie outside. He's hit by Brackenridge. He's knocked out of bounds. He's got the first down by the length of a foot. Now Austin he picks Collie, up five. He's a guy that Peyton Manning, when we talk to him, has tremendous amount of confidence and the kid from BYU. This is just a race to the sideline. Good timing. He knows where that first down marker is, and the heads up play allows him to pick up the first down. So he just turns out, he's just trying to stay on that angle that would carry him past that first down mark. Ellison, Landry, and Henderson on that 34 defensive line. It's first and 10. Brown remains back there with Manning. His drive started back at the 12. Good block by Brown. Manning's got time. He's looking for Wayne. He's almost picked off for a second time, and it was dropped. Sean Considine had it and couldn't bring it in. Manning a little bit off on Wayne. And for the second time, when they're trying to go to Reggie Wayne, they're rolling the safeties over the top. Sean Considine runs over the top. There was some contact beyond five yards down the football field with Cox and Wayne, but you could see Sean Considine rolling over the top, looking to get the interception. 
And you can see Peyton Manning saying, hey, we've got to get this thing worked out. Almost throwing his second pick in the first quarter. Second down and 10. A die is in the backfield with Brock. Still the nickel. A die. Looking for a block, and that's what he got from Lilja. Brought down by Nelson, a former first round draft choice. Another catch and run. This one for 17 by Joseph Adai to the 47 yard line of Jacksonville. You mentioned it, the left guard, 65. Ryan Lilja getting out in front. Johnson, the tackle, does a good job of allowing the first defender to go by 65. You see the block right there on Daryl Smith. That gets Joseph Adai to the second level. The running backs are going to have to play a huge role in this game, creating yards after the catch. Still the nickel. Adai in the backfield. First and ten. Adai holds you with the block, and there they are stopping it once again. Henderson brings it down, and a gain of two to the 46. That's the end of the first quarter. Manning was picked off in the end zone on the first possession of the game. We have no score. The rookie Cox is the one to steal it on the Pro Bowl. We begin the second quarter with Solomon Wilcox, Kevin Harlan, second down nine, tenth play of the drive. They had a ten play drive the first time they had the ball. Manning was picked off in the end zone. On the 46. Brown in the backfield, the rookie. Clark with the block. That's caught by Reggie Wayne, working on Reggie Nelson. He's to the 30 yard line. 16 yard catch by Wayne who's already caught two others for 15 and 16 yards in this game. Well they had this one double covered. You had Reggie Nelson working over with Cox but they're still able to complete this pass. This is where the timing and tempo of this offense really pays off before the defender can get into proper position. Well he used two words in the right timing and tempo. Absolutely. Peyton Manning is going to get the ball out of his hand. Nickel secondary first and ten Clark a block Brown the carry. And brought down on the play by Quentin Groves after a gain of four near the 26 yard line. And sign up for today for the only free fantasy league that is the league with live scoring, video, and more. And you could also win exclusive prizes like a trip for two to Super Bowl 44. Want NFL fantasy? Play NFL.com. Free fantasy. Second down and six. Nickel remains. A die is in. Second and six. Holly is the slot on the near side. Garcon is another receiver wide to the right. And the die. Oh, and it's a loose ball, and it was picked up by Cox, and it's still loose. And then maybe uh, a fumble. It is. They have ruled it not dead, but in other words, a fumble. Cox has picked it up. He intercepted Manning in the first quarter in the end zone. He's just vacuumed in a fumble by the Indianapolis Colts. The rookie has a nose for the football. He's hit. <laughs> the ball comes out and Cox pounces on it right away. He doesn't fumble often. Yeah, 497 touches and only a second fumble during that time span. So Two. he's always been trustworthy with the football. Two Indianapolis turnovers here in the first half. Maurice Jones drew. Jones the fullback with the block and he was initially hit by the secondary. It's a gain of one on the play. Gerard Powers the rookie got it. Maurice Jones drew but two turnovers early in the game like this for the Colts. You got to give Jack Del Rio the head coach a lot of credit. Even the rookie Cox comes in getting his hand on the ball but 22 new players as we said on a 53 man roster and to have your team ready to play to be this competitive going on the road inside of the division and getting off to a great start. Brock and Foster two of the guys on the defensive line second down and nine. Britain with the block. Maurice Jones drew good block there by Williamson out of bounds. He is leveled by Kelvin Hayden. It is a gain of eight here early in the second. They're going to spot the ball at the 44 and I got to tell you. Eugene Moreau has his hands full with Dwight <laughs> Freeney because he's one step away from getting to David Garrard who had a real good sense of timing and presence in the pocket to get rid of the ball. Jacksonville's put in another tight end. They got Mercedes Lewis and Estandia and Wilford. Three tight ends. Third and one. Garrard again moves the pile. He got it. 
He converts every third and one last year and already two for two this year. He's at the 44 and he keeps the chains on the move last year. He was nine of nine on third and one. Oh, this is where this young offensive line. We talked about them starting two rookies at the tackle position. They've got younger on the edge. They're still having a veteran presence on the middle and improved offensive line for Jacksonville goes a long way into helping them to have a successful season in 2009. Muir has come in along with Dawson at the defensive tackles. First and ten. Lewis in motion, the tight end. Britton the block. Nice catch, Torrey Holt, the seven-time Pro Bowler from St. Louis. Tackled across the way by Hayden. He's to the 47-yard line. And coming up, the sprint halftime report from New York, JB and company. Scores, highlights, plus we'll have an update from the U.S. Open. It's coming up on the sprint halftime report. Garrard is 7 of 7 throwing the ball today. Well, he's always been a good manager of the football. Doesn't turn it over often, but the way they're moving the ball here, they're running it a little bit, but he's making good decisions with the football. Second and three, Bethea is in. Well, Antoine Bethea is in tight. Maurice Jones Drew got a big block from Meester. Gets a block downfield from Williamson, and he plows to the 21. Hit by the rookie powers, a 22-yard sprint for 5-7 Maurice Jones Drew. The offensive line now has it going with Vince Manawai, Eugene Monroe on the left side. Watch him make Melvin Bullet 33 miss. He's really good at beating the first unblocked defender to gain even more yards after contact. Without Bob Sanders, remember, they're missing the heart and soul of this defense in terms of their run stuffer for the Indianapolis Colts. Maurice Jones Drew trying to take advantage of. Mike Sims Walker is a new receiver atop your screen, first and ten. Colts fumbled, and Jacksonville has moved the ball. This is Maurice Jones Drew. Clint Session brings him down after a gain of five. Spot him at the 16. He is a hard guy to bring down. Man, Very oh, tough to get on the ground. Only 5'7. He doesn't give you a whole lot. The hit. I always found that the smaller guys with a strong lower body were more difficult yeah. to tackle. Uh, the taller guys who gave you a lot of length, a lot of area to hit, they were easier. So a guy like Maurice Jones Drew and a Barry Sanders, who everybody knows is difficult to tackle, boy, the short, shorter you are, the lower you are to the ground, more difficult to tackle. Montel Owens is in, second down and five. Owens, who didn't play in the preseason, has the ball and was uh, whacked, as you can see. Antonio Johnson among the many that bring him down. It's a gain of four. A flag has been thrown. He's just hard to see is Jones Drew sometimes for these guys. I think for many of the safeties who are back deep, very difficult to see behind a big offensive yeah. line. And he'll come in once again. Fred Taylor, the all-time leading rusher for the Jacksonville Jaguars, released in the offseason. Grabbing the face mask. Defense. This penalty be assessed half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So this drive began at the 35. A 22 yard run by Maurice Jones drew an eight yard catch and run by MJD and all the way now you see them at the six where they got it first and goal as you take a look at Jim Caldwell the first year head coach for the Indianapolis Colts Jim Caldwell said he wanted a smart team he wanted a team that would play fast and more importantly a team that would be physical and control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball right now his defensive line is getting knocked off the line of scrimmage two tight ends Jones drew in the backfield first and goal great play by Mathis. Jones Drew right, trying to find some room. Antonio Johnson there and no gain on the play. Second down and goal. Much better play there. Clint Sessions, 55, blitzing, getting into the gap. Watch 55 coming right downhill and able to get into the backfield. And how about Robert Mathis coming off the corner as well? You're going to see the linebackers blitz a little bit more than normal for the Indianapolis Colts defense. Under Ron Meeks, their previous defensive coordinator, they would never blitz the linebackers. Larry Coyer, the current defensive coordinator, will do more of that with this group of linebackers. I play the drive, second goal at the six. Sims Walker in motion. Two tight ends, top your screen. Good block by Britt. Outside of Standia. Dropped the ball. Coverage by the defensive back, Kelvin Hayden. Standia just about had it third and goal. Now this is what Jim Caldwell means by playing fast on defense over to the left side of your screen. Watch 26. Hayton comes out of nowhere. Excellent tackle driving the Standia back not allowing him to fall forward after making the catch into the end zone. Look at that only six touchdowns allowed last season. An NFL record. I don't know if it gets any better than that even in 2009. Five in the secondary. Four receivers including Nate Hughes. Third and goal at the six. Jackson is the nickel.
Gerard deflected, incomplete. I think it was Sims Walker who got in the way, I think, of a pass intended for the tight end Mercedes Lewis. We'll have to look at it one more time. That ball is going to be thrown a little hot and hot. Going right off the hands well, of Sims Walker. But, but, but they had Mercedes Lewis in the in the end back of the in end the zone. back of the end zone. I think he was this ball sails high as he was trying to get it to number 11 Sims Walker. Hoping that he could make the catch and then you're right. Lewis had a chance to make the catch in the back of the end zone. 24 yard try here by Scoby who was 10 of 10 in preseason. Trying to cash in on the fumble by the Colts and Jacksonville does they lead it. They had it first to go at the six. The defense of Indianapolis holds Jack Del Rio and Gerard out of the end zone. Three zip the Jags. Scobie just had a 24 yard field goal after a dive fumbled. An 11 play drive. The Colts have had it twice. They've turned it over two times. And they've kept the ball for a considerable period of time. Going on very long drives before turning it over. Rushing his deep bat. Or make it Simpson. Simpson, the running back. Chad Simpson is it brought down by Ewell, a reserve linebacker, a 24 yard return. What's going through the mind of Peyton Manning? He wanted to start quick. His offense has turned it over twice in two previous possessions. Jim Caldwell, first year head coach at Little University to begin the game. Already being tested after two turnovers. He's lost his receiver, Anthony Gonzalez. So we'll have to see how the team can handle it. First and ten, the fake to a die. Here comes Reggie Hayward, and down goes Manning. Sacked only 14 times a year ago. One of the best in the NFL. He goes down right there, loss of seven, back to the 14. Working against the right tackle. Also on that side. Look, as he comes right off the court, no one absolutely blocks him. Lilja, the left guard, tries to come over and keeps him off Peyton Manning, but he's unable to do so. Hey, so a little led. confusion in the blocking scheme up front. He led Jacksonville with four sacks a season ago, second and 17. Outside they go, Reggie Wayne. A block out there by Johnson. Great defense on the play. Looked like Nelson was there. He was to make the stop on a meager gain of three to the 18. We told you Peyton Manning would have to be patient early on. He tries to go for the touchdown here. Intercepted by the rookie, Derek Cox, who decides to stay in. And then the hit on Joseph Adai, forcing up another fumble. It was third and 13, a long pass, and it's caught. Cox was beaten by Reggie Wayne, a 39-yard completion. They had been giving Cox help over the top. None here. This is just Peyton Manning saying, look, we've got to make a play. They get him in a one-on-one -on -one matchup against the rookie, number 21, Derek Cox. And how about Reggie Wayne? He told us, hey, I have a lot to prove with Marvin Harrison no longer being here. And with Gonzalez out, it's Colley. And it's Garcon as the two young receivers on the near side. Eyes in the backfield, first and ten from the 42. Four in the second end. A dive. Big block inside by Lilja. Tackle made outside by Cox, and they also had uh, Justin Duran out there on a gain of four down to the 38 yard line. Going back to our conversation with Reggie Wayne, he said in that first meeting, he said, Look, I knew things had changed after we listened to the hit. Little stick by Durant, but what did Reggie Wayne tell us? I knew things had changed when I came into the meeting room, and my assigned seat was to the front of the meeting room. Second down and six, still four, make it five in the secondary now. And uh, Manning a little bit off on that one, third down and six. Trying to get some rhythm going in the offense. Peyton Manning. Had, Talked about him needing to be patient. I think it at, is at times like this, when you get into the second quarter, week one, no points on the board for this offense, that's where your patience really does have to pay off. Harvey, Henderson. They've got Ellison, and they've got Hayward on the defensive line. Third down and six. Four in the second, make it five. Brackenridge is in as the nickel. There's a block by Johnson, a pass completion to Clark. He is tackled by Reggie Nelson. Down at the 17 yard line. That's a 21 yard reception by Dallas Clark. Peyton Manning has to have someone he can rely on in the offense. We've seen Reggie Wayne make a play. Now Dallas Clark gets in on the action. An excellent catch going over the middle of a defense that you know someone's going to lay a lick on you. 
That took real excellent concentration to make that catch over the middle by Dallas Clark. Still the nickel, first down and 10 from the 17. A die in the backfield. Joseph Fadai, team of block. Tackle made by Justin Durant. No gain in the play. They'll stay at the 17. Now, if you're the Indianapolis Colts, what you're thinking on this possession is that, guys, we've been able to move the ball on our first possession. We had 10 plays. It ended with an interception. Second possession, another 12 plays as we were moving, and that ended with a Joseph Fadai fumble. Now you're entering the red zone yet again. You know you can move the ball against Jacksonville. Just be patient. Try to stick the ball into the end zone. Second down and 10. Eighth play of the Jackson the block. Reggie Wayne. He was knocked down by Durant, stretching his way to the nine. Picks up eight. And you notice the veteran presence of Reggie Wayne. He catches this ball over the middle. Now he's not going to try to do too much. Over the middle, protect the ball, get down. <laughs> he's going to protect himself and the ball, but I think that's a smart play because as long as Peyton Manning has the ball, you have a chance to score. Third down and two. Still five in the secondary for Jacksonville. A die, a block by Clark, and a tackle made by Breckenridge along with Considine. Gain of five, they get the first down. Excellent play. Really good run action by the offensive line and Joseph Adai doing a better job of protecting the ball, hammering the inside of the Jaguars defense. You know, for receivers, it's not just always pass catching. It's, it's blocking downfield as well. Yeah, and that's what they talked about, the receivers getting involved in the running game. If you're going to improve the Colts' running game, all ten guys have to block. First and goal at the four. Wayne and Colley to the top of your screen. Garcon to the bottom. Gonzalez out with the knee. A die in the backfield. 10th play. Joseph Fadai holding on for dear life. The number one pick out of uh, Florida from a year ago. Derek Harvey, gain of a yard to the three. Derek Harvey in his second year, now a full time starter. Former first round pick. He comes. I think a more pivotal player. We talk about this team getting even younger. You can see another 10 play drive by the Indianapolis Colts as they're knocking on the door. Big plays on this drive, a 39 yard reception by Wayne, 21 yard pass to Dallas Clark. Second goal at the three. Still the nickel, the three wides, and a dive. A dive. Saturday up block. That is a touchdown. Tremendous drive, 11 plays, five runs, only six passing. Yeah, they had the big pass play to Reggie Wayne and then to Dallas Clark, but Joseph Adai really atoned for his previous mistake. Did an excellent job pounding the ball at this defense. Adam Vinatieri sends it through, and the Colts on top, 7-3. to three. Big play, 39-yard pass to Wayne. Here comes Adai, slashing for six. Beautiful day in Indianapolis. A die from three yards away with the touchdown run. First two possessions for the Colts. They turned it over. Now the ensuing kickoff. Shane Andrus will boot it. Others boot at the five yard line for Jacksonville. Owens with the block. And his way late. Kiaho gets him. Brings him down. 26 yard return. How does David Garrard respond? His team down for the first time today, 7-3 and 3.33 to play in the half. Back in Indianapolis, the Sprint Halftime Report is up next from New York. JB and company. After a three-yard touchdown run by it up. All the kickoff went to Jacksonville to the 31-yard line, first and 10 with two tight ends. Garrard. Here comes Freeney. And that pass is caught downfield. A beautiful grab made by a guy, one of the top 11 receivers in the history of the game, statistically, Torrey Holt. A gain of 26. He's down to the 43. What sense of timing and trust between David Garrard. He let this one go well before Holt has made his move. And it was just tremendous anticipation and then the diving catch by Torrey Holt. 
That's and a good point. I mean, you play defensive back, you know how those timing things can kill you. Very difficult to stop. Still the two tight ends, first and ten. Jones drew in the backfield. Good block by Britton. Look at the time for Gerard. Incomplete for Estandia. The coverage on the play by the rookie Gerard Power. Second down. Good play action fake. And you can see it's because of their ability to run the football. They've rushed for 54 yards already. And listen to the block. You can hear it. Wow. That was Maurice Jones Drew as he was running through on that play action fake. See, if they're going to fake it to you, you know you're going to get hit. Four in the secondary. Second down and ten. Jones is the fullback for Jones, the running back. They block by Meester, but they come outside. Freeney can't get him. Mirror can't get him. Look at the elusive David Garrard to the fullback. He knocks it outside to Craig Jones, a nine-yard gain and what appeared to be a sure set. The white Freeney has to be disgusted. He's got to come right off the corner from the blind side. He misses. Then number 90, Muir, Daniel Muir, he has an opportunity. And the loss of 20 pounds has probably made David Garrard a little bit more durable. He talked about it, the ability to have more endurance as the game goes on. You can see the strength there in his lower body, able to shake off defenders and still get the pass off. We're going to be at the two-minute warning, a long 26-yard pass to Torrey Holt sends Jacksonville into cold territory with two to play in the first. Two-minute warning. Each team with three timeouts. Third down and a long one. And it's been David Garrard pounding it and keeping it himself to pick up the first down. Tackles are Muir and Foster for Indy. Jones Drew blocked by Manawa. Tackle made by Hagler. It is a gain of two. He's got another first down. This time they go to the tailback. Well, the MetLife Blimp is providing today's aerial coverage. Look for the MetLife Blimps as we team up with CBS for more coverage this season. It is first and ten. They bring in Marlon Jackson. That means they're going to have the nickel five in the secondary. On the line, Freeney and Mathis at the ends. Here and Foster at the tackles. You see the allotment of receivers, including Nate Hughes, wide to the bottom of your screen. First and ten, Jones drew, man wide the block, and an alert tackle is made at the 30-yard line. And that was by Mathis after a gain of two. Yeah, but it was also Clint Sessions, 55, blitzing up the middle and stuffed the run, and Jones Drew was able to bounce off. So Indy's blitzing the linebackers a lot more today. Timeout, first of the game, 116 to play in the first half. Timeout was just taken. Running the ball has been Jacksonville's uh, way to go at Indianapolis in the past. There is no doubt. I mean, the balance, and you could see Maurice Jones drew already 50 yards rushing. They've rushed for 58 as a team, and even Torrey Holt, the veteran, getting in on the act. Against the Nichols, second down and eight. Jones drew in the backfield. Raheem Brock now playing a defensive tackle for Indy. Britton and Williams with good blocking on the right side. Almost picked off, incomplete. It was almost swept by the rookie Powers. He had it. He dropped it third and eight. Oh, it was the pump fake that led Powers back into position and he had bought some time for him over to the right side, the lower part of your screen. See the pump fake there and that allows Powers to get the jump on this throw because he did have a receiver who was wide open. Number 16, Nate Hughes. How about Powers jumping back? The ability to close on the football, have to be able to make the catch and get the turnover. Still the three receivers, still the nickel. Third down and eight. They need the 22. Jones drew at the side of Garan. Jones drew. Boy, he makes a miss, but then they collide on him. Marine Brock and Clint Session were there, along with Mathis, gain of two. Timeout taken. The ball to the 27 yard line. And they're going to try for three. Each team with two timeouts remaining. The elite receivers can always make that first unblocked defender miss. Yep. Well, critics call the good wife smart and sophisticated. See why Juliana Margulies is perfect in the best new drama of the season. The Good Wife series premiere Tuesday, September 22nd. Only on CBS and Solomon Wilcox. Let's back up here just a second.
Two turnovers, first two possessions for Indy, including a red zone, end zone interception by Peyton Manning. Jack Del Rio felt confident last night. His team has played with uh, confidence today. Yeah, he said that even with a young team, we expect to be able to come in here and win. You get the sense, though, they may have squandered a couple of opportunities mm -hmm. after getting two early takeaways, getting the turnovers, but very few points to show for. There is Scobie. 46 yard try. He's belted one through from 24. This from 46. Kane with the long snap. And he has it. 46 yard field goal. A dandy in Indy. 7 6. 59 seconds in the second quarter. Second field goal by Scobie. The ensuing kickoff. One point game. Simpson will take it two yards out of the end zone. Oh, he got a nice block on the play, and then he is brought down from behind at about the 37-yard line. Scobie and Witherspoon bring him down. 39-yard return. Great block by Ramon Humber, who is leading the way. Saturday on the Home Depot SEC on CBS, Lane Kiffin leads the Volunteers against Tim Tebow and the defending national champion Florida Gators. Hoople begins with Chip Randall and Spencer Tillman. TIA Crop College Football today. First and ten. Last year, the two-minute offense of Indianapolis, the best in the NFL. Nickel secondary, including starts. First and ten. Good block by Dean. That is dropped downfield by Collin, who led in college football a season ago in receiving yards at BYU, second down and 10. Excellent coverage by 31. Scott Starks, but still an opportunity for Collie to prove to Peyton Manning he can be trusted over the middle of the field. If it hits you in the hands, you ought to be able to come down with it, even though Starks was in excellent position on defense. Five defensive backs again, second down and 10. Brown at the side of Manning. The push up the middle. It goes to Garcon, and Pierre Garcon was hit by Starks. Whacked in the play by Groves, gain of seven on the play. They're going to call a timeout with the gain. Uh, Solomon out to the 44-yard line. Yeah, and if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, you understand with 36 seconds left on the clock, plenty of time for Peyton Manning. Not for most quarterbacks, but Peyton Manning will look to use every tick on the clock for 36 seconds to try to put more points on the board here before halftime. I like what Jack Del Rio said about Manning last night. It said it's not necessarily his arm. It's not necessarily his athleticism. It is his mind which is special. One of the best in terms of playing from the neck up. His ability to dissect and read the defense in his pre-snap read. So he'll step up to the line of scrimmage and he can lock in on what you're doing. I think Jacksonville's done a good job mostly in the first half with their five defensive backs forcing him to throw into coverage. So we got a couple of new defensive coordinators for these respective teams. Yeah, there's no doubt. Mel Tucker, as you see here, defensive coordinator for the Jacksonville Jaguars and Larry Coyer for the Indianapolis Colts. Nate Manning has forced every team in the division to change defensive coordinator. A die is in the backfield. Nickel secondary. It is third down and three for Peyton Manning. Gonzalez is out with an injury late first quarter. A die. Ilja with the block. Daryl Smith and Durant coming through. Justin Durant with the tackle. Gain of two to about the 46 yard line. And a die comes up limping just a little bit. And he was injured a lot last year. And yeah, and Donald Brown tried to come in for him. He waved Donald Brown off. Joseph Adai <laughs> said, I'm not coming out of the game. Starks is the nickelback. We've seen Brackenridge back there, but now Starks, and he's had a couple of nice plays defensively. Fourth down and one. Indy with a timeout. And a timeout taken by, let's see here. Jacksonville takes this one. play defensive back in this league for a long time when you're in a two minute defensive situation against a guy like Manning I'm sure there's a lot going through your mind. Well the key is is keep every offensive player in front of you. You can't allow a guy to get behind you and Peyton Manning's going to take a shot down the field. You've got to prevent the easy touchdown by allowing them to just throw it up and have their guy come with it come down with it in the end zone. Fourth down two. Jacksonville just took a timeout. Manning with the pump fake and going deep for Cole Gulley just about had it. Coxedine was down there. Dallas Clark just about hauled it in. Three seconds remain on downs. It goes to Jacksonville. This is an overthrow by Peyton Manning. He had Dallas Clark screaming wide open over the middle. See the pump fake? So he wasn't able to regather himself, and that ball was just overthrown. 
Clark did, I think, just an excellent job to get one hand on the football. Nearly came down with it. Manning, 15 of 21 with 175 yards and an interception in the end zone. Sometimes when you pump fake it and you try to reload and then gather yourself and throw the ball accurately, you can rush your throw a little bit. And I think that's what happened to Peyton Manning. Look at this with three seconds remaining. Josh Scobie is going to try a 63-yard field goal. He had a terrific preseason, as we told you about. But remember now last year, in September, in this building, Josh Scobie hit a game-winning field goal against the Indianapolis Colts to give the Jaguars the win. Well, he has the leg to do it and, and has the right, I think, conditions for it right now as well. You're kicking this ball off the turf, and there is no win. I mean, absolutely no win here in Lucas Oil Field. Last season he was 19 of 25. Today he is 2 of 2, 24 and 46. The snap will come from King. Hodlish will hold from 63 yards. Going to be short. And the guy was stepping out of bounds. In fact, there was TJ Rushing who caught that ball. We're at halftime. Joseph and I with a three yard touchdown run. Colts turned it over the first two times they had it. Manning threw a interception in the end zone. Scobie with two field goals. It's Indianapolis on top of Jacksonville. Seven six at halftime on CBS. A dies touchdown run. The only touchdown in the game. Seven six. This game is brought to you in high definition. Here on CBS this afternoon from Indianapolis and with Solomon Wilcott's Kevin Harlan. Thank you for joining us. Manning and that offense struggled early in this game. There's no doubt. I thought Jacksonville did a really good job of maybe even confusing Peyton Manning a little bit, running some 3 4 defense. They came out and used five defensive backs on the floor, but you can see they're in the mind of Peyton Manning, who you know of set the ball in the second half. And Indianapolis got to do a better job of protecting the football. And a look at the reigning MVP moments ago. You just saw Peyton Manning and with the ball to kick off Shane Andrus. Adam Vinatieri will kick off eventually, but Vinatieri had right knee and right hip surgery this past offseason. Witherspoon is back for Jacksonville. Second half is underway from Indy. About a yard deep for Witherspoon. Until ends will block. And the return is out to the 27-yard line, 29-yard return. And let's take a look at our two quarterbacks today. Yeah, I think both quarterbacks have been very good, other than the interception by Peyton Manning. You can see both guys doing a really good job uh, just completing and taking what the defense is able to give them. Not many big plays throwing the ball down the field. We've seen Manning connect on one play down the field with Reggie Wayne, but for the most part, both secondaries have kept the quarterbacks checking it down to the underneath wide receiver. His first down and 10 from the 28 yard line with Maurice Jones drew in the backfield, four in the second down. Britton with the block, and there go the flags. Neutral zone infraction defense, number 93. Step in the neutral zone, cause an offensive lineman a false start. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Only the game's third penalty right last year by winning 10 consecutive games. So this game today, very important to win this game so that you have a chance to win the division title. First and five with the lead block by Williams. That's uh, the 5 7 Maurice Jones Drew picking up threes out to the 35. Foster on the defensive line, the stop for Indianapolis. So it does put, I think, tremendous pressure on the loser of today's game. Puts them at a disadvantage if you're going to try to win the division title. We talked about it. Yes, we did. With Jack Del Rio. He said every year it seems like the winner of this division jumps out to such a tremendous start that everyone else is playing catch up just to try to come in second. Jones is the fullback, second down and two. It's Mercedes Lewis, the tight end in motion. Williams with the block, right on the money. Torrey Holt with a catch to the 48, brought down. On the play by Kelvin Hayden, 15-yard pickup and a first down. Oh, you just get the sense that Torrey Holt knows what he's doing. Remember, it was the Arthur Malcolm Gladwell who said that the key to success is to practice a task repeatedly for 10,000 hours. What did Jack Del Rio tell us? He said Torrey Holt has his 10,000 hours 
and that's why he's mastered the craft at playing that wide receiver position. 11-year veteran. He's got a pass down 154 consecutive games. It is a first and 10. First series of the second half from the 48. Nate Hughes out of all court state is in motion. Jones Drew. Williams with the block. And it was tripped up on that defensive line by Antonio Johnson. Gain of five to the 45. For those of you who are listening at home, my play-by-play -play partner, Kevin Harlan, also has his 10,000 hours <laughs> in a broadcast booth. Uh, that's how long it takes to be able to master your craft. Can you imagine that? I need, an, I need another 10,000 hours. Second down and six to go. They start here to start the second half for Jacksonville. Yeah, they are off to a good start. Really good rhythm and timing between the run and pass game. Second and six. That was knocked down. Mathis coming from the wing. They're working on these two rookie tackles. Mathis and Freeney have been tag teaming in this game. This is Mathis off the top of your screen working against 73. Eben Britton, the second round pick from Arizona. You can see pushing the pocket in the face of David Garraw. Well, an extra defensive back is going to come in now for Indianapolis. Third down and six. Garrard, 11 of 16 today. And he uses that extra back, and the big tight end on the near side is Lewis. And the extra defensive back, the nickel back for Indianapolis, normal starter Marlon Jackson. Third and six, they need the 39. Oh, and he slips, and he had his receiver, Williamson. Incomplete, they got a punt on their first possession yeah. of the second half. Gerard threw a really nice pass, and Williamson just could not keep his footing. I think it was surprising that he was able to get so wide open. Left side of your screen, this should have been an easy throw, easy completion, but he slips and falls down. Working between the safety and cornerback, that should have been a first down for Jacksonville. Adam Podlesh, who beat out Steve Weatherford in preseason, will again try to pooch this. He had a nice one earlier on with great hang time, rushing his deep back, and this takes a Colts bounce. Standia brings it in. Hang time of four point. One 31 yard punt right there, but well placed. Manning has it when we come back, 12:30 in the third. Jacksonville opens up a nickel. You see the three wides for Manning from the 14 after the punt by Jacksonville. First down at 10. Saturday the snap, a dime. Good block by Deem. Considine was right there. Gain of four on the play tonight on 60 Minutes. President Obama, at a critical moment in his presidency, is one on one with our Steve Croft. Plus, Senator Ted Kennedy, his life in his own words. On an all new 60 Minutes tonight, Gonzalez is out, hurt a knee late in the first quarter. Yeah, and, and they've been really good at moving the ball even without Gonzalez, but boy, they've had some tough field position. Five possessions today uh, started right around an average of their own 21 yard line. Brackenridge is the nickel. Second down and six for Manning. And he's got his receiver, Pierre Garçon. He's brought down by Cox, who had, a who had an interception, and Rasheen Mathis on the near side, gain of 11. Garçon, he and Austin Colley have spent the entire training camp and preseason working to earn a spot on the field to become that third wide receiver. Now they may have to be the second and third guy without Anthony Gonzalez. Well, you mentioned before that Manning has worked a lot with these two young kids in practice. Absolutely. He said he spent extra time staying out to make sure these guys would be ready to play when the regular season began. Still the nickel, first and ten. Joseph Adai with the three-yard touchdown run is in the backfield. Big hitter Garcon, whacked by Mathis, who was a pro bowler a couple years ago, also hit by Brackenridge, quick gain of five to the 35. Rasheen Mathis is such a physical <laughs> defender at the quarterback position. Listen and feel this. You can feel it up here. Yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> the booth <laughs> just shake. But Mathis, boy, he's more than just a man-to-man -man cover guy. He's a very physical player. Those, those are the kind of hits he used to level in the second We could hit a little bit. We'll <laughs> knock the, the mouthpiece out. Second down, long four. And a flag. Was that a delay of game? Oh, we got a little false start. False start. Offense number 85. Five yard penalty remains second down. That's on Garcon. He had a, at the division three level, a record 60 touchdown receptions in three seasons yeah, for now, Little Mountain Union. Absolutely. And now earning the experience at the NFL level. And 
you know, Mathis is up close on it, talking to him a little bit. I think got him to jump off sides there or get a little movement before the snap of the ball. Five defensive back, second down nine. Clark is back there with the die. Manning tries to manage his offense. Dean with the block, dropped by Adai. He's already fumbled today. That was picked up by Smith, as you see, and then he raced the other way, incomplete third and nine. So yeah. a fumble by Adai and a drop pass here. Now watch Adai. Is he limping a little bit here? Because he didn't seem to turn up the field. And see how he's limping right there after the drop? Certainly should have made that catch. Should have seen the ball. I know there's some sunspots out there, but I don't think the sun was a factor on that drop ball. Well, it looked like Jacksonville was trying to move some personnel and they got caught, so they have to take a timeout. With 10-11 uh, to play in the third. Pretty downtown Indianapolis. Beautiful stadium. Third down and nine. Jacksonville trying to change some defensive personnel. We're caught. You see what Manning has done in situations like this today. 4-4. Four four. The nickel secondary. In fact, they got five. They get six back there. Starks has come in, too. Six defensive backs. The fake to Brown. The block by Saturday. The reception by the rookie out of UConn, Brown. And he was brought down on the play by Nelson. He's got the first down to the 40-yard line. Picks up 10 on third and nine. This starts with the offensive line because they held the protection long enough for Manning to look through to those sea of defensive backs, as you mentioned, to find Donald Brown. And how about the rookie coming in, making a play, and now Manning five for five throwing the ball on third down. Seven defensive backs, seven of them for Jacksonville. First and ten. Brown at the sign of Manning. There's an isolationship between Saturday and Manning on this, uh, this rotation for Indianapolis. Yeah, Peyton Manning is actually talking to the skilled players while Jeff Saturday parks out the protection. First and ten, big block inside. The twirling Brown past midfield. Wrapped up on the play by Gerald Alexander. Gain of 11 after he just caught one for 10. So Manning calls a run play to Don O'Brown. And look at the blocking to get the rookie running back to the second level. His ability to not only break tackles, but how about protecting the ball as we take a look at the offensive coordinator, Tom Moore. Seven defensive backs, first and 10. Stadium, stadium. I mean, you don't see seven defensive backs that often. Absolutely. This is Brown. Lead block by Dean. Lead block out there by Saturday. Brought down by Brackenridge. Gain of four to the 44. Seven defensive backs means you huh. only have four guys to stop the run playing at the line of scrimmage. There's Tom Moore again. And boy, was Peyton Manning happy to have him back. There mm -hmm. had been some talk. He's the senior offensive coordinator. That's his title. But... Still the same role that he's functioned in so many years here in Indianapolis. Second down and six. Brown again. Dima block. Still on his feet. And cuts it on. The X Eagle brings him down. Gain of three to the 40. One yard line. This is why they got Brown. He is a more physical running back than a dot. And I think really good vision to make the unblocked defender miss. Tyron Brackenridge came in unblocked. And how about Brown was able to make him miss in the backfield and still get to the second level. We got a couple guys that are down now for Jacksonville. They look like they're cramping. One is. Well, they got one Quinton Groves is down. And it's a nice way to slow down this offense at the same time. 7.53 in the third. Landry and uh, Groves are out. They've gone to five defensive backs. They've got three linebackers in. Henderson is back on the line with Reggie Hayward. Third down, short three. Brown remains the running back. Knighton is the defensive tackle. Clark hit by Nelson. Out of bounds. First down, 35, gain of six. We're going to give you our eye control, the run by Donald Brown. And watch Brackenridge. He's the guy that should make the tackle, but great vision by Brown to still get it to the outside. Now watch this play. 
And this is where he's just got good vision. He knows where to go and that the edge will be sealed, so he's still able to get to the second level by making the unblocked defenders miss. Starks is now coming as the nickel. Tenth play of the drive. Adai is back in as a running back. First and ten from the 35. This drive began back at the 14. Good block by Clark. Manning, he's got his receiver, and it's a touchdown! Caught by Reggie Wayne. Beaten was Sean Considine. Wow. Dallas Clark threw the block of a lifetime, buying just another tenth of a second for Peyton Manning to get this ball off. In the, in the box, you can see the block, but then he runs by the entire secondary. And Reggie Williams has to stay in position. Sean Considine can't come over in time as he was able to early in the game. And Peyton Manning said, finally, we're able to hit one. I may have said Considine too early as Vinatieri gets it through. May have been Reggie Nelson's guy, huh? Nonetheless, Peyton Manning has thrown his first touchdown pass, a 35-yard strike. That is a gorgeous stadium from our blimp. Moments ago, a 35-yard touchdown pass to Reggie Wayne. Another 100-yard game for him. The ensuing kickoff, Witherspoon is back to get it. And it goes into the end zone and a touchback just creeping inside the pylon to the 20-yard line. So now David Garrard is down by his largest deficit of the day, 14-6 and 6.54 in the third. Jacksonville's second, second half possession. Punted the first time. First and ten, Maurice Jones drew. And a block by Monroe, and he's out with a gain of four to the 24-yard line. Guy control shows us there were three important moments on the play. One is the block by Dallas Clark. The other is the fact that Reggie Nelson thinks that it's a short route. The third is that we think that Sean Considine believes that he's going to get over the top, but he's not able to get over the top in time. So there's the block. Nelson bites on it, and then the ball goes right into the end zone to Reggie Wayne. Second down and six. Lead block by Jones, and here's Jones. Drew, you can see how he's stacked up in there. Not a lot of room to roll. Gain of a yard to the 25-yard line. You've been watching these rookie tackles today for Jacksonville closely. Well, you know what? I think they have fought. I think they've hung in there for the most part. They've done a good job. There has been times where the pocket has collapsed, and Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis has been able to get enough pressure on David Garrard. Now we have to see how they hold up in obvious passing situations. The nickelback is Marlon Jackson for Indy's defense. Third down and five. You see the assortment of receivers. Jones Drew is in the backfield. Caught. Oh, trapped by Holtz. Covered on the play by the rookie Gerard Powers. Three and out for Jacksonville. That will build the confidence of that Colt defense. Pocket collapsing a little bit on David Garrard. He's forced to throw the ball low to the feet of Torrey Holt. But you've got to give Kelvin Hayden a lot of credit. Because to the outside, oh, this is number 25. That's Powers. Yep. The young player. How about that? Going up against the veteran, Torrey Holt, and knocking the ball down. Podlish will punt. Deep back is rushing. Sheds his eyes from the sun. 32-yard line. Hang time of 4-2. And you see him zigging and zagging. And then brought down by Witherspoon. Three-yard return. 43-yard punt. Here comes Peyton with a lead of 14-6. Throughout the season, CBS Sports will be looking back at some of the biggest moments in the 50 years of the NFL on CBS. He's got it! Manning's got the record! Peyton Manning has captured a piece of NFL history! And he hit his favorite slot receiver, Stokely. Some kind of season for Peyton Manning. Then he's a three-time MVP, the reigning MVP. After remember last year, they got to the three and four start. He had the, the the two operations on his left knee within 18 days. The infected bursa sec. I mean, there was some really con uh, concern on his part. 
because he's a big rep guy. He needs a lot of repetition. And Bill Polian said that it wasn't an injury, it was an illness. He really were concerned. Everyone was about Peyton Manning. Got up to the three and four start, then went on to win nine in a row. By the time he got himself in midseason form, boy, was he ready to go. It's the nickel secondary on first and ten from the 37 yard line. And die is in the backfield. He's got a touchdown run. Reggie Wayne has got a touchdown reception. Gonzalez is out with an knee injury, suffered late in the first quarter in a non contact play. Play action. Going deep. Looking for Wayne. He drops the ball. Boy, he had the guy, that rookie Cox out of William and Mary, the third round pick there, stride for stride. About the best kind of coverage you can get on a great guy like Reggie Wayne. Boy, oh, watch him at the top, and you see his ability to separate, turns the rookie around. Now, watch the extension at the end of the play. He had the catch. It took the ball hitting the ground to jar the ball loose. Tremendous effort from Reggie Wayne. Without Marvin Harrison, a lot of eyes are on Reggie Wayne. Oh, and boy, is he showing us something today. Second down and 10. He has over 100 yards receiving. Still the nickel. Brackenridge is the fifth defensive back. Oh, here comes the blitz by Durant. They get it off to a dive. You see the quick pursuit brought down on the play by Montavious Stanley, among others, a gain of four, getting him from behind at the 41. Peyton Manning says bad things happen when the quarterback holds on to the ball. Pressure comes, he gets rid of it, saves himself from getting hit and getting sacked. Now, that's how you start 177 consecutive regular season games. Third down and six. Indy is eight of nine on third downs today. One, two, three, four, five defensive backs remain. Dean with the block, Johnson with the block, tackle made by Daryl Smith that was on Reggie Wayne, gain of three, shy of the first by two, he's to the 46. And you wanted to know who made the best play on that snap, it was the official, getting out of the way so Reggie Wayne could make the catch. Three and out for the Indy offense. Three and out, not able to shake the defender and create yards after the catch and pick up the first down. Manning had been so good on third down. Still gets the completion, but not enough to get a new set of downs. Here's the first punt by rookie Pat McAfee, a seventh round pick out of West Virginia. Deep back Witherspoon. Snow with the long snap. Nice hands on. Fair caught at the nine. Hang time 4.78. 45-yard well-placed punt. And Tuesday, September 22nd, after NCIS. See why the critics call NCIS Los Angeles one of the can't-miss series of the fall. Chris O'Donnell and LL Cool J. Ladies love Cool J on NCIS Los Angeles only on CBS. You got that LL thing down, oh, don't yeah. you? <laughs> when you've got three daughters who listen to a lot of music, you, you learn a lot. <laughs> As you take a look at our fantasy snapbacks from the nine, Jacksonville, first and ten. Jones drew in the backfield, four in the secondary. And somebody moved. Was it the rookie Monroe? Absolutely. Both at left tackle. Offense number 75. Five yard, excuse me. Penalty be assessed half the distance to the goal. Remains first down. He sat out. He had a lengthy holdout, contract holdout, but he has uh, obviously captured that starting job. And Del Rio said that he came in and worked his tail off, and you'll see the movement right there, anticipating the speed of Dwight Freeney. In fact, they said, hey, he earned the job. He beat out the 12 year veteran, Trey Thomas, to win the job and become an opening day starter. Freeney and Mathis are at the defensive ends. First and 14. Couple tight ends. Jones drew, plugged up. Looked like Melvin Bullock came through and got him around him the up, ankles along with Muir. He was there, gain of two to the seven. Well, this is where the Indianapolis Colts, you have to be like a shark. You've got to smell blood in the water. You've got the Jacksonville Jaguars pinned in close to their own goal line by getting a three and out here. You force him to punt. You get excellent field position for your offense and Peyton Manning to really drive a short field to put more points on the board. Tackles are Muir and Johnson. Four in the secondary, second down and 12 with the two tight ends for Jacksonville. Good block by Lewis. Chased by Mathis. Oh, and he crushes the quarterback, Garan. Running out of real estate. It'll be third and 12. 
He wanted to go to the tight end. Estandia, 83, coming over. And that's who he wanted to get the ball to. But you can see 26, Kelvin Hayden, he takes it away, forcing him to hold on to the ball. Then the pressure of Robert Mathis in the face of the quarterback it really doesn't allow him to hold on to the ball any longer. That's complimentary defense at every level. Your defensive line, the secondary level, and then deep, not allowing the long throw from David Garrard. Fullback, Greg Jones, couldn't hold on to it. Third down and 12, nickel secondary. Marlon Jackson is in. You see the assortment of receivers. Garrard, they come up the middle. Freeney was out. Oh, the pressure on Garrard. He can't breathe. Suffocating pressure by Indianapolis. And another punt coming up for Jacksonville. Gerard has missed his last five. And it was Freeney coming right underneath the tackle. Eugene Moreau. Watch him come underneath. You see he beats him inside right away. And at this point, David Gerard is running for his life. He's compelled to get rid of the ball and not take the safety. The sack in the end zone would be really detrimental to their cause to try to win the game. Pavlis will punt. Deep back is rushing. The sun in his eyes waves it off. Oh, and it takes a great indie bounce. And Considine picks it up. Hang time of 4 6, 27 yard punt. Look at the field position for Peyton Manning. Well, next, CBS Sports takes you to Flushing Meadows for the semifinal showdown between Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic. Either way, Nadal has lost in straight sets to Del Patro. Dick Enberg will have that as the voice of the U.S. Open. So here we go. You see the rushing yards and other yards in this game. And look where Manning starts. 34-yard line of Jacksonville, first and 10. They've got the nickel out there. Adai is a receiver at the bottom of your screen. Adai, the first hit by Ingram. Then brought down by Durant, who's all over the field. It's a gain of a couple on the play, and we'll call it second down and a long and nine. Just to step back a little bit, Kevin, when you talked to Jim Caldwell, he said there were some errors of the football team that he wanted to improve going into 2009. Wanted the defense to be more aggressive. Wanted to improve his special team, so he brings in a new special teams coach. You could see the complimentary football being played. The stop by defense, the special teams to get good field position for Peyton Mann. Second down, nine, a die. Pulling is Pollock the guard. Boy, they run it well. Durant with a vicious hit inside, a loss of a yard. And push him back to about the 34-yard line. The defense is now for both teams beginning to stiffen. And they understand it. 56, Justin Durant. He nearly blew up that play all on his own. Shooting the gap, getting into the backfield to disrupt their ability to run the football. There's no huddle run uh, very well by Manning. Huh? Absolutely. And now let's see what he's working with. Dallas Clark or Reggie Wayne has become a favorite on third down. Five defensive backs, third down and ten. They need the 24. Clark with the block. Dean with the block. Nice defensive play by Rasheen Mathis right in front of Pierre Garçon. Mathis, a pro bowler. We talked to him last night. He says he and Gerard have been asked to lead not by the coaching staff but by the team and huge stop and huge play by Rasheen Mathis breaking this ball up intended for Pierre Garçon and they were forced to keep Dallas Clark in for protection so they had to max protect as we see they're going to go for a field goal Indianapolis is determined to try to get some points out of this real good field possession set up by the defense over the offseason, Vinatieri had right hip and right knee surgery. Missed a lot of the preseason. 52-yard try, and he misses. The defense of Jacksonville holds. It was long enough. Just wide left by Adam Vinatieri. So Jacksonville is still in business. 137 here in the third. Let's go to New York in our CBS studios and James Brown. Kevin and Sala, you know Jerry Jones paid Roy Williams handsomely. I know he'd like to see a lot more of this coming up here. Romo hooking up with Roy Williams. 66 yards to pay dirt. Yes, sir. That's what he wants. 20 to 7 Dallas on top of Tampa Bay in the third. Back to Kevin and Solomon. Buccaneers have a new head coach and uh, Dallas with their coach Wade uh, Phillips a little bit more tough on the team now. Yeah, a lot of pressure on Wade Phillips in Dallas. They've got to win now. No pressure here on Gerard on first and ten. Chased by Brock. Low pass, uncatchable for Mercedes Lewis around his ankles and incomplete. And Gerard ticked off at himself. He didn't like uh, either the route or his pass. Maybe a combination of both. Well, has your fantasy football league website let you down? There's still time to upgrade. 
to the award-winning fantasy football commissioner. Get a special offer and help moving your league at cbssports.com slash upgrade. And Kevin, Kevin, David Garrard has missed on his last six passes. And so he didn't really set his feet and really poor fundamentals on that last pass attempt. They only have four defensive backs on second down and 10. Jones Drew. He's hit by Gerard Powers, the third round pick out of Auburn. It's a gain of nine. He's up to midfield. Back to James Brown in New York City. Well, after Joe Flacco threw a pick, boy, he comes and answers right back. Kevin, take a look here. Hooking up with Todd Heap, forgetting the bad play, making a good play, nine yards. It is now 17-14 as the Ravens answer right back in the third. Kevin and Solomon. How about Kansas City, 2-14 and 14 last year, playing the uh, playoff team of the season go well. Absolutely, and on the road, really good start for Todd Haley. Third and one. Oh, Jones through Cork screws off the oncoming rookie Powers, and with the second effort, he vaults for the first down to the 46. He, and we talked to him last night. This kid is amazing, and he picks up a first down after the first hit. The elite backs can make the unblocked defender miss right there, creating yards after contact. That's why he got the new contract in the offseason. That's why this team felt good about transitioning from their all-time leading rusher in Fred Taylor to go with Maurice Jones-Drew. First year as a full-time starter. He had a good game last year, 107 yards against this team. First and 10, 46. Nickel secondary. Outside it goes, Nate Hughes. Well, he took his head off across the way. That was Antonio Johnson with the tackle. It's a seven-yard gain. He's down to the 39. This kid was a terrific athlete. Could have gone to Stanford for just football. Went to a smaller school because he wanted to compete in track and field. Yeah, and, and actually, he has really proven that he can play football as well. Colts on top, 14 to 6. Missed opportunities for both teams. Indianapolis has gone three times into Jacksonville territory with two turnovers and a missed field goal. Yeah, need to be able to capitalize on those opportunities to try to pull away. First play, fourth quarter. Second down, three. Greg Jones in there with the lead block for Jones. Drew, and the tackle was made by Eric Foster. It's a gain of two. And down to the 37-yard line. Jack Del Rio, you know, they purged this team. They really reshaped this team in the offseason. Yeah, he said that, you know, they were getting old at some spots. And then there were just other guys that they felt were not really, you know, best for his football team. And you talk about the 22 new players on a 53-man roster, the way they've come out, gone on the road against a team inside of the division and have been very competitive today, despite having two rookies start at tackles against two of the better defensive ends in the National Football League. They're down and one. Jones, the fullback, remains. Jones drew. Jones with the block. Maurice Williams with the block. That's a first down. Tackle made by Brackett. Gain of three. Move the chains. 34-yard line. How about the quick feet of Maurice Jones drew? The ability to change directions. Going lateral, then get vertical. Going downhill to challenge the defensive linebackers and knock them back. He, he's always going forward, even after contact, far from being a little guy. As you see some of the numbers, you always talk about footwork. You love <laughs> Absolutely. good footwork, don't you? Got to have the sweet feet. First down and 10 from the 34. Lewis is on the move. Jones drew in the backfield with Greg Jones. Good block on Freeney by Monroe. That's caught by the angular tight end. Lewis, 15-yard line, belted on the play. And a 19-yard pickup, bullet with the tackle. We First said down. it at the beginning. You got to have some play action right there. Then the pump fake to the right, coming back over. See the pump fake pulled number 33, Melvin Bullet, out of position, and he's not able to close in in time on Mercedes Lewis, who's a huge target going over the middle of the field. Brock and Freeney are the two defensive ends. First and ten after that 19-yard pickup. Hughes out there as one of the three receivers. Look at Jones, Drew, spin his way inside the 10, brought down by Muir, picks up five. You love watching him play. Since he came out in 2006 in a draft that had a lot of talented running backs go before him, he went in the second round, but I don't think any of them have more all-purpose yards rushing and receiving than Maurice Jones-Drew. There's a player down for Jacksonville. We have not spotted a number. 
12.49 with the injury timeout in the fourth. Second down and five, ninth play of the drive at the nine of Indianapolis. Four in the second year. Jones drew, Jones a block. Session the linebacker with the first hit. He's down inside the six. He picks up four. Going to be just shy of the first down marker. They're doing a very good job of just pounding the middle of that defensive line for the Colts. By the way, the player that was down was a standing. He left. Now he's back out. Now he's back in. Yeah, just got back out. Look at the rushing there. Jones drew another. They thought they could run, and they have run well. They have run well, and he's done a really good job of breaking tackles. Even though he's hit and they tend to run behind the fullback Greg Jones two tight ends third down and two Jones drew session again with the hit. I don't think he got it Him Brock and they had uh, Taiwan Hagler no gain on the play sooner or later You've got to change what you're doing I think you're tipping your hand when you run to what we call the tilt of your backfield and watch as they're gonna run right where the tight end and then 33 Greg Jones if the fullback is set to that side well it's clear that's where they're going with the football and the Colts were locked in to what Jacksonville wanted to do well it's fourth down and two and they're going to go for it they got another defensive back out on the field five in the secondary for Indianapolis fourth down and two Jones drew in the backfield oh everybody moving time out Indianapolis Indianapolis will burn their first time out big play coming up for Gerard and Del Rio in Jacksonville Jacksonville is going to go for an 11th play of this drive fourth down and two at the seven yard line five in the secondary you see the allotment of receivers a tight end and a running back back there with Gerard Freeney is at one defensive end Jones drew Monroe with the block. Oh, he smashes in for a touchdown. What a call. Seven-yard touchdown run. We said they would have to find another way to run the ball. They get Greg Jones, the fullback, out. They don't tip their hand. In fact, it's a perfectly designed play by Dirk Cutter, the offensive coordinator for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they'll just flip it to him right here, getting to the outside. And how about Lewis kicking out on the defensive end and then they're getting blocks at the second level 75 Eugene Monroe doing an excellent job. Now they've got to go for two in my mind. I think it's the right thing to do. The nickel remains defensively for the Colts. They're going for two. Directly to Maurice Jones drew in that wildcat formation and they stuff him. They knock him down. Freeney among others and that guy right there the rookie Gerard Powers among many that make the play but you like going for two as you're down by two. I love going for two but Maurice Jones Drew got to have a better feel for where to take this ball ran right into the blue defensive line for the Colts. 97 rushing yards for Maurice Jones Drew a seven yard touchdown run moments ago but they missed on the two point try. Yeah and he touched the ball eight times of those 11 plays and I think it was the right thing to do. I think Jack Del Rio had to go for two try to tie it up because with 11 minutes left on the clock Peyton Manning and the offense could use a ball that time to run out the clock. Scobie the kickoff Simpson on a jump at the one. Well he was hit by Ewell and brought down by a standing near the 20 yard line. On a return of 20 yards Manning with a slim lead of two Thursday on the premiere of Survivor there have been villains before but no one like this you won't believe what he pulls on the premiere of Survivor Thursday only on CBS that was a terrific drive and Gerard was bad to the bone he had a 19 yard pass to Mercedes Lewis which got him in good field position on that last drive now here's Manning first and ten Five in the secondary. Brackenridge is the nickel. And Gonzalez hurt his knee late first quarter, out for the game. We don't know the severity. Brown is in the backfield, the rookie, and he gets the call. Lilji had a leap back, and then they fought right through. Look at John Henderson crawling and bringing him down. The two time Pro Bowler allows no gain on the play. Second down and 10. Big John Henderson slamming the door shut. The coach said they had to get 
the run game going. You could see the near bobble, almost a fumble by Donald Brown on the handoff from Manning. And there's Henderson slamming the door shut along with Justin Durant. If you're the Indianapolis Colts and you want to eat up a huge chunk of time, which we've seen them do in this game, go on long drive, you've got to be able to run the ball and manufacture some yards in the backfield. Second down and 10. The die is now in for Brown. Good block by Johnson. That's caught by Reggie Wayne. Durant makes the stop. 33-yard line. Great it's a gain catch. of 14 yards. Great catch because it was not a perfect throw for Bate Maddox. This one went high. He did use the old pump fake to Dallas Clark. That's what drew the linebacker out of position. But you could see the extension by Reggie Wayne to make sure he came down with the catch. Boy, has he had himself one well of a game. Yeah, nine catches, 152 yards, and a touchdown reception. He's been terrific. First and 10 from the 33. A die remains. Good block by Clark. Initial hit by Durant. Brought down 37 yard line after a gain of four. A die was injured a lot last year. He had 1,000 yards his first two years in the league, then really struggled last season with injuries. Really did fall off in his third year. You mentioned the consecutive 1,000 yard seasons to begin his career here in Indy. But once he started getting nicked up, slowed down a little bit. That's why they had to draft Donald Brown in the first round. Try to get Joseph Adai some help so that he can stay healthy for a full 16 game season. Second down and six. Still the nickel. They have the rookie, Knighton, playing the nose tackle here. They've seen a lot of 34 today by this normal 43 defense. Manning, that's caught by Colley. Hit by Brackenridge, first down, 48-yard line, efficiency right there, 10-yard pickup. Kali is a guy that's got a real good feel for the passing game. He's been a sure-handed receiver throughout training camp and the preseason, earning the confidence of Peyton Manning, who told us, hey, I put in a lot of time and work with the young receivers. He said, I expect these guys to really come in and be productive right away. And we've seen that Kali's been able to make some catches today. No changes, first and 10. A time. Clark with a block. And smothered Durant. Gain of a couple on the play, and it'll be second down and eight. Durant had the tackle. This is life after Tony Dungy for the Indianapolis Colts. It really is. And, and what that means is it's a team that does have to build, I think, a new identity. We talked about Tom Moore, Howard Mudd, both returning. But I think with a new head coach, once you get into those moments of crises, which we've already seen early in this game, mm -hmm. how is Jim Caldwell going to handle it? I think he's been very calm. You can see that his team is really playing well, even though they're in some adverse periods in the early going of this game today. Hayward and Henderson are the two defensive tackles, defensive ends in this 34 look. Second down and eight. There are five in the secondary. Man, a good block by Dean. Almost picked off for a second time by Considine. He's had one that went through his hands earlier. Almost picked one off right there on the pass intended for Pierre Garçon. Anytime you get a chance to make a play when Peyton Manning throws the ball right into coverage, as he does here, Considine spins right around, and that's why Peyton Manning went to the outside to Pierre Garçon, because he saw the hips of the safety Considine angling in on the inside receiver, so he threw it on the backside. Give Considine credit for wheeling back around and able to break up that pass play. Third down and eight. Still just the five defensive backs, even though you see the four wide spread by Manning. Team with the block, caught by a die. Hit on the play by Stark out of Wisconsin. He's down to the 43, picks up seven on third and eight, a yard shy, fourth and one coming up. He's going to be close. And this is a big decision by Jim Caldwell. Do you go for it on fourth down here? If you don't get it, you give Jacksonville excellent field position. Well, look at this. This surprised you. Yes. you know, I think you have to play the percentages. I, I think it's a smart play to go ahead and punt it and try to pin Jacksonville deep and down their uh, end of the football field. I think it's the right decision. This is Pat McAfee, all-time leading scorer at West Virginia, replacing Hunter Smith, the longtime punter for the Colts. Seventh round pick. Oh, beautiful hang time. And they will down them. That was the long snapper, Justin Snow, who finally balls it in. How smart is Jim Caldwell now? Woo! Great hang time, and it pays off. 43-yard punt. Jacksonville stranded at their one. The rookie McAfee with a great punt. 
He downed him at the nine earlier. The rookie just downed him at the one right here with great punting. First and ten. Lewis in motion. Play action. Good block by Jones. Trapped by Holt. Great coverage by Kelvin Hayden. He's been injured, but he's playing today. Second down and ten. Well, Excellent. The Hall of Famer to be, Tory Holt. Yeah. Really good coverage by Hayden. And watch how he just patiently waited on it. And then he was able to get himself in a position to knock down the ball without creating contact with the receiver. Takes really good timing in terms of precision. Watch how he slips in on the back shoulder. So he starts on the upfield shoulder and then goes around to knock down the ball without creating contact. Good point. Second down and ten. Four in the secondary. Two tight ends. Garrard just has to get some breathing space, so he takes it himself. Following his center, Meester picks up about two yards. Kevin, so often in games, it's the hidden yardage that mm -hmm. wins football games. And remember, Jim Caldwell wanted to improve the special teams. I got to tell you, that punt by McAfee might be one of the biggest plays so far in the game today. The fact that you're able to pin Jacksonville so close to their goal line. If you can come up with a turnover and turn it into points, we can look back at that punt and say, boy, it could have won the game for Indy or at least helped them to close it out. Mathis and Frenier are the defensive ends. Foster and Johnson are the defensive tackles. It's third down and eight. Four in the secondary. Gerard. Oh, Monroe let his guy go by. But look at the nimbleness of Gerard out to the 10. They built him there. Boy, they had some nice defense. But they, among others, bracket. Gain of seven. It was third and eight. They're a yard shy. <laughs> Dewan Hagler <laughs> shaking his head. I don't know what just hit me, but we stopped him. Nearly a sack for a safety. And you can see they're scrambling at the feet of David Garrard, but then watch him finish off this run. Probably could have used the extra 20 pounds as he was able to knock Taiwan Hagler back. Let's fill it. Wow. The defense of Indianapolis just recording their third straight or third three and out this half. And here is the punt by Potash. And deep back is rushing. Oh, 33, hang time 4.78. Not bad at all. By Adam Potlish. 57 yard punt. Wednesdays on Showtime. The Emmy Award winning inside the NFL returns. Join JB, Phil Sims. Chris Collinsworth and Warren Sapp for all the football that's fit to fit in. Wednesday is on Showtime. The old RCA Dome, can you telestrate this here for us where it was? Right there. See where they're doing all that construction? Bottom of your screen. A uh, little bit, yeah, a little bit lower. Little bit right there. Yeah. That's, that's what that's you're really good. For. I like that. Yeah, with the moving target <laughs> like that, it's kind of tough. Good job, nonetheless. First and ten, five defensive backs. That's Brown, the rookie. There is a block out there by Colley. There is a flag thrown on the play. There is a gain of three. It's out past the 35. And Smith, among others, there to make the stop. As Brown is some kind of player, or Big East Player of the Year. Holding defense number 96. This five-yard penalty would be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. That is the rookie, Terrence Knighton. Well, we want to thank the MetLife Blimp for providing, uh, for giving us these aerial coverage uh, views, these great scenics of the drama below. Look for the MetLife Blimp Snoopy 1 and 2, and they pass through a town near you. There to the left-hand side, you can see where the old RCA Dome was. Three receivers, five defensive backs. You see the numbers in total yards, and it's first and ten. Around in the backfield. Boy, there was a great block by Jeff Saturday. I mean, he just knocked his guy, Terrence Knighton, right off his horse. Gain of five, up to the 46-yard line. The Saturday, one, of the, one of the more underrated centers in the NFL. Oh, absolutely. On the same page with his quarterback, Peyton Manning. The ability to run the ball and pound it right up the middle of the Jaguars' defense is going to be essential to them running time off the clock. Starks is the nickelback, second down and five. How quickly Wayne getting a block from Brown. How about that? Well, this is essentially a run play. It's just an extended long handoff to Reggie Wayne. You release your lineman, get him down the field, pick up a block for Reggie Wayne, and boy, they have a sizable gain on the play. Ten-yard gain down to the 44, exactly what they want to do, consume the clock and move the ball. Jim Caldwell said something to us in our meeting, said, look, we want to be a smart team. We don't want to self-destruct. We don't want to hurt ourselves. How about that? 
penalty on Terrence Knight, mm -hmm. giving them a new set of downs and more yards on this drive. First and ten, Brown in the backfield, Rambo, Nickel second Rambo. down. Brown. There's a block by Clark. They read it well. Henderson was in there to make the stop. And uh, Knighton was in there, among others. It's just a gain of a yard down to the 43 yard line. Well, this is Manning at his best. You know, organizing his offense, using the clock, short passes to control the clock, move the chains. And he gets to call the play. So yes. he's going to come up to the line of scrimmage. And if he see that the Jaguars' defense is overcommitted to the run, then he will go up top. He'll take a shot at the end zone. But if he sees them mostly in coverage with five defensive backs, he's going to continue to check it down and run the football. Second down and nine. Henderson and Hayward are the defensive ends. Knighton is the nose tackle. Oh, boy, what a great scene throw to Dallas Clark. Tackle by Starks. Gain of eight. Mark him at the 35. Really good play because they did come with five defensive backs. You can see Starks, but then they're just working that scene, as you mentioned, between the linebacker Smith and Starks, number 31, the cornerback. Dallas Clark, excellent feel for where Manning wants to go with the ball. 300 yards passing now wow. on the day for Peyton Manning. 48th time in his esteemed NFL career. Here's the fullback now, Eric Foster, the defensive lineman. He is in there to block for Brown. Couple tight ends in there, Robinson and Clark on the near side. Third and one. Foster with the block, and a good one it was. And let's see if Brown was able to squirm. Alexander was the guy that took on the block of the defensive end. And the gain on the play, probably no more than a half, I mean, just a, just a couple inches, really. Just a six, seven inches, and we're going to have a measurement from the sideline. That's a pretty big measurement, too. Let's see if he made it. He's got to get just beyond that 35 yard line oh, and no. I, I think know. the nose may have just broken it but, but he needed to get I think a little 34. bit more than that I think he needed the 34 there you go I think he's short yeah I think he's going to be short by short oh. by about a ball oh yeah there you go well now what do you do We're just before the two minute warning Jim Caldwell in his head coaching debut in the NFL a guy from Beloit Wisconsin who was a Star point guard in his high school team. They were state champions. Met his uh, wife there. They've been married over three decades. A longtime assistant under Tony Dungy, waiting for this opportunity. Dungy retires. He's the guy who's elevated. And I think you put this on the offensive line. I think you got to go quarterback sneak. I wouldn't even risk coming back with the ball and sticking it in the belly of a back. I think if you're Peyton Manning, you got to keep it yourself. For one, I'd work the hard count to see and test the discipline of the defensive line of the Jacksonville Jaguars which I'm sure Jack Del Rio is telling his bunch let's not give them the first down by jumping off sides because Peyton Manning will work the hard count but if I'm Indianapolis I'm going to try to pull him off bounds but if I do snap the ball I'm going to go quarterback sneak see the timeout story touchdowns in this game a three yard touchdown run by it up 35 yard touchdown pass to Reggie Wayne and for Jacksonville, seven-yard touchdown run by Maurice Jones-Drew with two Scobie field goals of 24 and 46. So here we go. It is fourth down and inches. Foster, the defensive lineman, is the fullback for Brown. Two tight ends right side. That's where they run. Foster the block. A sexy move by Brown. Jacksonville thinks they've held. Wow. Jacksonville thinks they've held a, yeah. with a nice play turned in by Justin Durant, the linebacker. It's a risky run play because you had to get going toward the sideline before you ever run downhill towards the first down mark. There's a player down for Jacksonville. And I think they're going to come up short, to be honest. I think with they you. are, too. And I think the offense of uh, Indianapolis knows it. They're leaving the field. A player is down. It is hard to see who it is. I'm not even going to guess. Injury timeout, 159 to play. This is the two-minute warning. Reggie Hayward was the down player. They've taken him off the field. We'll try to get something to you here in the remaining 159 of the game. This is the two-minute warning. They're taking a look at the knee. All right, first and 10 from the 35. They need about 30 yards to get in Scobie field goal range. There's a nickel secondary. That includes the nickelback, Marlon Jackson. There's a block by Britton. They dump it off, and it goes to Maurice Jones-Drew, who is brought down by Brackett. It's a gain of three. 
up to the 37, and uh, there's no huddle here by Jacksonville. They're playing with one timeout, and Indianapolis has two. Let's see if they give either one of the rookie tackles some help on Freeney or Mathis, because both guys understand it's an obvious passing situation getting up the field in a hurry. Second down and seven. Great time. Good block by Monroe. Oh, it's chopped by Maurice Jones. Drew at the 38. It'll be third down and seven. Well, last year and the year, a couple years down the line, Scobie had game-winning kicks in 2004, a 53-yarder. Jacksonville won at 27-24. And then week three last season, Scobie had a 51-yarder. That gave the Jaguars a 23-21 win. Here is a obviously important third and long seven. The nickel secondary. Jones drew in the backfield. They need the 45. Meester a block. Incomplete fourth down. Session was watching the tight end Lewis. There was incredible pressure up the middle by Brackett among others. Larry Coyer brings the middle linebacker Gary Brackett. Seldom seen blitzing under their former defensive coordinator Ron Meeks. But with Larry Coyer now running this defense, we told you early on the linebackers would be blitzing more here in India. Boy, did it pay off on the third down play. Mathis, Brock, Foster, Freeman on the defensive line. Five in the secondary. Fourth and seven. They need the 45. Mathis almost got Gerard. Brackett's got Gerard. It's all about the pressure. Both defensive ends. First Robert Mathis, then Dwight Freeney, and then Brackett, the middle linebacker. He told us in our meeting, we've got to do more to help our pass rush. We put it on the defensive ends for so many years here. It's now time for the linebackers to get in on the pass rush. Now watch Robert Mathis. He whiffs because he tries to snatch down the ball. And then there's Brackett and Freeney to finish off David Garrard, who tries to get that ball off. But boy, what about the pressure on the quarterback and the coverage on the back end all held up. Ron Meeks was the defensive coordinator here for a long time. Gerard going down right there. Solomon mentioned Larry Coyer as the new defensive coordinator for new coach Jim Caldwell. Coyer was the defensive coach of Caldwell at the University of Iowa. And now they're reunited here. Here is the victory formation. They go down to a knee. Jacksonville's got a timeout. Clock will. Stop at 112. Timeout taken by the Jaguars, and they now are empty. So take a look at Jack Del Rio. They purged a lot of players. Gene Smith is the new general manager. Let go of 22 guys. I mean, some notable names like Matt Jones and Reggie Williams and Jerry Porter and uh, Dennis Northcutt, Spicer, and uh, they've they've tried to change the character of the team in the same sweeping move and they feel they have done that and they played a 12 win last year indie team well today and I think you've got to be proud if you're Jacksonville obviously you've got to come out and you want to win but Jim Caldwell gets his first win inside of the division first win as an NFL head coach and I think he's got to be pleased with the way they did it particularly with the way the defense was able to play in the latter parts of this game so Peyton Manning with his 118th win in his career has just tied the legendary Johnny Unitas for the most wins in Colts history. And today he started his 177th consecutive game. So he is a team player first and foremost, but these individual marks and a guy that he looked up to growing up in John Unitas, I mean, these are unbelievably meaningful to this guy. These milestones are not lost on Peyton Manning. <laughs> he knows the numbers, and they are part of his legacy. And, and boy, is he a. You know, just a wonderful caretaker of all the good things you love about NFL football. Boy, do the Colts have their hands full now. After today, three of the next four against division champions at Miami, at Arizona, at Tennessee. David Garrard and Jacksonville, three of their first games are against AFC South Division teams. So... Wayne's big 35 yard touchdown reception the big play the Colts are now a two point winner over Jacksonville for Solomon Wilcox Kevin Harlan sending you to New York. Thank you.